Mr. Speaker, I stand before you today to offer an apology to former students of Indian residential schools. Today we recognize that this policy of assimilation was wrong, has caused great harm. If I was in a residential school and I heard that apology, I would have been like, your apology means nothing to me. You have no idea what I went through. For you to actually understand and soulfully apologize to me, you would have to be in that school with me to understand. very little at first about the subject matter but I thought from what I did know I thought it would be really important. I heard it was about working on a legacy project I didn't know what that was but it was exploring the Aboriginal culture so I thought that would be interesting as well. Really I just signed up for another course at the time for acting but I didn't realize what the impact was gonna have. I started reading the book Indian Horse and I got a better appreciation for what the lives of residential school students were like. And just from there it kind of built on. We watched uh, Where the Blood Mixes as Theatre Aquarius and it was just from there it was something really big to keep going. I wasn't really sure what it was and we went to the school and started reading books about it. And it like hit me, it, it fell on me like a ton of bricks. Once I got into it I saw that we were I, I figured that we were doing like this big project that everyone needed to hear this story and I was like ec ecstatic to be a part of it because uh, I never really been a part of anything that actually went anywhere. Our class is from Glendale Secondary School and we are a class of both playwriting and writer's craft. We wrote the play ourselves. It's a collective play called Ten Miles Out and we did it as a class all by ourselves so that people know what exactly happened during those times in the residential schools. The chapel scene before we took the words away. I am Crystal Dimitru and I am the project director and dramaturge. So basically I was in charge of what we have labeled the legacy project. Just under four years ago I was in Rwanda, i had been studying genocide and I was sitting by Lake Kivu one night and uh, a friend of mine who is from Saskatchewan, and she's First Nations. We were looking at this map, it's now a memorial site, and it represents where genocide has occurred in the world. And I said to her, but North America is on there. We don't have a genocide in North America. And she looked at me and she said, Crystal, you have to promise me one day you will find out what Canada did to its Indigenous peoples. Genocide happened here in Canada, which is a place where we often think of it as a peaceful, welcoming country. I wasn't aware of anything like ever since I was little I was interested in Aboriginal arts and stuff like that but any like about the residential schools and stuff like that I didn't know that about and then I took this course and then I learned all those things. So we got a uh, grant from the Ministry of Education the Aboriginal office and from there it was okay now we have a budget now we can do this. I'm Ojibwe. <laughs> I am a uh, First Nations uh, I actually grew up on a reserve and I remember when this one time when me and my grandmother were driving in the car, um, she told me that uh, my grandmother that I'm named after, uh, my middle name's Leona, she uh, had to deal with residential schools and she was one of the ones that actually was able to run away and get away from the residential schools. And I, I've always wanted to ask her about it. but. I didn't want to disrespect her or anything, and so I just let it be. I didn't want to end up hurting her or anything. So I was always taught to respect my elders, so that's what I did. We're basically giving a voice to those who didn't have a voice before. We're going to be going to one of the, the former schools, which is the Mohawk Institute, now known as the Woodland Cultural Centre. You're going to meet with survivors who have lived through the experience of being in these schools. I started pulling in all of our resources and, and books that we were buying and, and, and films that we were getting. And so I started all by, by giving them some of the history and making it available. On the way there, I noticed like a lot of people were like happy on the bus, stuff like that. But when we started going down the street to the school, then it started to click in that all the children, they all had to go through that, is come down that street in a car 
with some stranger they didn't even know and then end up in this school. And I kind of put myself in their shoes. I just pictured myself being taken away from home and everything that I know and be taken to this building I've never seen before and not understanding why. I was involved in the a collective getting ideas together, the research, putting scenes together. I created a few scenes. I um, actually wrote the initial production script. I just put everyone else's ideas together and I was in the play as an actor as well. I play a character named Faith and she's a new girl in school. So she hasn't had any experience with the English language, only Ojibwe. She hasn't been exposed to English at all, so they're trying to force her to learn English, but she still can't quite understand because she's younger. And I wasn't really sure at first. I was like, do I really want to go into another class and have to meet like a whole whack of new people? So I was like, I should give it a shot, so I did. And then I ended up being in this like tremendous play, and it was just so like, breathtaking like I couldn't believe that I was actually part of something like that. When the show times came I actually got an email from my dad's brother my uncle he said to me your great granddad he was in a residential school he got taken from the reserve at the age of eight or nine and it was really more touching to me when I found that out it told me more about what he was like and he's never seen him ever since and when he told me that it kind of moved me to research more about my culture and tribe and everything. I don't think anyone can really understand why this would happen to anyone and for so long and it's just such a great injustice that I don't think people can come to terms with it and I think us telling what we've told is showing people that we understand that they can't understand it. It was hurtful to me um, but like to imagine telling your story and then being told you're a liar or that never happened, it made me realize if you're sitting in an audience and you have 30 students, if you have a school telling you this is what happened, you're gonna believe them. You have no choice because it's like a backing instead of just one individual, it's like a community, right? And so like just working with everyone, being in that community and sharing that story. It was really touching and sorry. <laughs> I just really love that everyone did this from my great grandmother and for everyone. I think mainly it's just people are sometimes ashamed of being native. And it's really hard to think about that because um, I actually remember when my mom told me that I was Native, um, I was actually really proud and I wanted other people to feel like that the way I felt. And um, I think the point of the show was really to show people, you know, this happened. This, this is something that cannot just be ignored. You know, people were taken from their homes, their families, their culture. They were ripped away from their lives, and now all they have is this space, this, you know, this hole. I don't think it fell on deaf ears. There were many people out there that were shocked and, um, you know, they wanted to know more.
My wish for these students is to know that when you stand in the truth, when you question, when you learn, when you learn to listen, and then you can articulate and tell the truth, that carry that forward in your whole life. And when you answer that question, are all humans human? You know you're standing in the truth. Regardless of what your religious backgrounds are, regardless of where you're coming from and things that life has given you, it's about you taking control and learning and listening and moving forward with things. I think I surprised myself from how much going into this it was, considering I didn't really know what I was signed up for. The thing that I love the most about being in play is actually being able to learn more of what, what was lost. What no one really cares about, but I definitely know I care about. I actually was able to tell some people about like the native culture that I, the knowledge that I learned from my elders, and I got to pass on to them. I felt like I was more experienced in in that topic, so I actually loved being able to like talk about it and actually having the knowledge. Am I? uncle he told me he's like Brandon the last show at the very end go outside and look up to the flagpole and just touch it and look up to your granddad I did do it I remember um, our last performance uh, one of my friends came down with her dad and he brought us an eagle feather and I remember just like crying, bawling my eyes out, and I was just like, it was just the greatest honor. Maybe it'll, it'll open people's eyes, you know? We're not different from each other. Like, we're people, we're human beings. And yeah, we have different cultures and different ethnic backgrounds, but what is that really? We're human, we are all people. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't make a difference.